Andrew Sluter is not saved. He's a damnable heretic. Andrew Sluter began to teach some very heretical things. You expose yourself as a heretic, a lying heretic. There's the NLT, there's the NIV, and, and the thing, all of them. And, but, but the thing is, none of them are the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. It tells us, listen, if the Bible doesn't lay you in the lap of Jesus, it hasn't mm. done its job. That's it's right. That's you know, good. like looking at a picture of Niagara Falls and saying, you've been there. That's no. right. Jesus is the walking, talking, living, breathing word of God. And Jesus is the last word God had to say about himself. Welcome in to another edition of the Layout to See and Lookout podcast. And I've got my partner in crime here, Randy Keener out of New Man of Baptist Church. Randy, there's usually only one reason why you come on the podcast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we just heard yeah. that reason. We are definitely looking out in Laodicea today. We are getting a face full of Laodicea. Uh, golly, Randy. That's bad. That's bad stuff. So um, in case you live under a rock, um, we there's been a recent controversy on the Recovering Fundamentals podcast, um, and Mark Lowry was on there. Famous Southern gospel singer, sung with the Gaithers. I don't know what he's doing now. Obviously, making heretical statements about the Bible <laughs> is one of the things he's doing now. Um, but this clip is what prompted us to do this podcast. And we're just going to basically run through and talk about why this is real bad and, and real, real wrong. Yeah. Well, you called it heretical. And you nor I throw that word out like a no. lot of guys do. Right. I believe you can be wrong about things and not be a heretic. Mm -hmm. But that statement there, and I know a lot of guys are arguing for his intent. Well, he didn't mean it like it came out. You can't say that. You can only judge a man by what he actually said. Yeah. And so what he actually said is heretical. It literally denies one of the fundamentals of the faith. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, just to deconstruct that clip really quick, right? So he makes a statement that, that the NIV and the NLT, that none of them are the Word of God, mm -hmm. okay? Well, well, coming off of the King James. Right, coming off of making a statement of the King James. You can go back and listen to it in its entirety. I have a feeling they may take it down. They may not. They may not. They usually stand behind what they say. Yeah. I will give them that. But they may not take it down. <laughs> they're arrogant. Yeah, yeah. They do We're going to talk about that here in a minute, how they're doubling down on this thing. But he's coming off a statement talking about the King James Bible. And then he says, you know, the NIV and the NLT. And then he says, but none of them are the Word of God. Okay, well, I would agree that the NIV and the NLT are not the Word of God. But those recovering fundamentalists, JC and Brian and, and Nathan, they wouldn't agree with that. No. Well, I'm King James only, mm -hmm. you are, and most of the people we hang around are. But when you have somebody saying that there is no written word of God, yeah, that's new levels of bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, even James White, and we could play a clip of him mm -hmm. saying that the word of God is out there. Right. You know, and he puts it in whatever translation. But now we are completely faced with somebody who is making a heretical statement saying there's no written word of God. Yeah, and and, and the problem is the fact that, you know, because the, the last thing he says there in that little clip is, you know, there is no, you know, Jesus was the last thing that God had to say about himself. Mm -hmm. What the heck are you going to do with Paul's writings? What the heck are you going to do with Peter, with James, with John? You know, what... All these epistles that came after Jesus left planet Earth, even the Gospels were written after Jesus was off the Earth. That is not just a dumb statement. That is a dangerous statement. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting. They just did a podcast. Um, I have not listened to it. I'm gonna listen to it because I'm. I, <laughs> you were telling me about it. It's real bad. It's it's real bad. Evan, you sent me some clips. 
but they came off. They just did a podcast on apostasy, mm-hmm. where they talked about apostasy and everything. And and they evidently they broke their necks in Hebrews six, is what you were telling me, because they're not dispensational. Um, if this is an apostasy, then then you, somebody tell me what is. Like if this is not apostasy, if this isn't just blatant in your face apostasy, then I mean, tell me what is apostasy? Because Randy, this is literally a fundamental of the faith. Yeah, and the logic of it is is you can't believe a man who is described to you by a book that you don't believe in. Right. You know, that's the logic of, of what's happening here, and that's the big issue. So to say that there is no written scripture, man, that goes off the rails. There is no orthodox position that would claim that in history. No. I mean, this is real bad. And the, the problem, though, that we're dealing with is... A lot of the guys who are kind of coming to their defense, uh, the issues is they cannot hold two adult thoughts in their head at one time because mm-hmm. they're saying, but Jesus is the word of God. Well, yeah, we that's not up that. for debate. The problem is he's the word of God, but there's also a written word of God. Yeah. The the Bible literally says in John 10, um, let me get my Bible quick. I, I think this, you know, this verse of scripture is super important to, to point out. Because it literally embodies the fact that the Word of God is the Scriptures. Mm-hmm. It's uh, John 10, 33, I think it is. Let's see here. Uh, 35. 10, John 10, 35. If he called them gods unto whom the Word of God came, and the Scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, cause I said, I am the Son of God. The Word of God and the Scriptures are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we understand that there's the written Word, and then there's the physical Word, Jesus Christ. and That was like elementary school in in Christian school for me. Yeah, I I learned this in Sunday school. Yes. And evidently, and Mark Lowry did too. I mean, I know he did. But this is the kind of apostasy. You want to talk about apostasy? Let's talk about it. This is apostasy. At its height, this is literally why the fundamentals of the faith had to be had to be put out there because people were denying the the written scriptures. Mm-hmm. Regardless of if you, listen, even if you're not King James only, you should have had a problem with what Mark Lowry said. Exactly, a hundred percent, you should have. Um, and and here's the thing about it, you know, not only what did he say what what he said. Uh, we got a little thing we're going by here. I'm trying to, I'm, you know me, I'm trying to stay on topic, which is difficult at times. Um, but not only did they say what they said, but they're trying now to defend it. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to say, well, he wasn't a theologian and he wasn't, you know, a um, whatever. Yeah, he's a comedian, not he's a, a theologian. Comedian. And so his and I would word... agree with that statement. <laughs> and I, I mean, I would, uh, I'll stop there. Anyway, um, yes, that's what they're saying. But, they just let a non-theologian talk theology for almost an hour. Yeah, and and it and the the Bible wasn't the only issue. Mm-hmm. Like he was talking straight up theology. He was talking about why he denied the rapture. Mm-hmm. He was talking about why he denied original sin. Mm-hmm. Now, me and you may be a little bit more on his side about that, mm-hmm. but I know that Mr. Calvinist Cravat <laughs> would not have been. I mean, that's like a fundamental of, of Calvinism. And for a lot of people, and, and we're not saying that people aren't sinful or born sinful. We're just saying that the idea of original sin, like that people are born the absolute enemies of God, da 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 da. And so I can give Mark Lowry a little bit of understanding grace there. But like, according to Calvinism. Plus, he really wasn't describing what original sin is. Like right. He just had it wrong. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if he knows what original yeah, sin I'm not sure is. Because remember, he's not a theologian. Right. <laughs> But he's talking theology on there, and then they're like, "Oh, well, he's not a theologian." Mm-hmm. But who? But my question was like, who even claims to be a theologian? I am a theologian. Nobody even claims that title, really. No. So, well, the issue is this too. I was in radio for fourteen years, and I, I gave them this grace on Facebook. When I was in radio. I had guests go off the rails at times. It's just part of it. Yeah. And we'd do live interviews. People would say crazy stuff. 
um, you, you never amen it. Like you never even put an amen close to heretical <laughs> statements, which yeah. in, in here they were silent. But as soon as they could jump back on, man, they jumped back on. So you never put agreement anywhere near that. But having said that, the problem there that I realized after I gave them so much grace on this is this wasn't live. No, this wasn't live. They could have edited it out. They could have put a disclaimer as yep. they did with Nathan Rager. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's a multitude of ways that they could have handled this. Uh, they could have broke in and said, hey, we're just going to step in for a second and make sure that nobody misunderstands our position on the Word of God. But no, they just let it go mm. as it, normal. It's because as long as you're attacking the IFB, you get a pass. Mm -hmm. You get a pass. Now, what was the guy they like to quote all the time? Timothy Keller? Yeah, Tim Keller. Tim Keller. Talk about that for a second. You know, you know about this yeah, more than I do. Well, Tim Keller... Um, the biggest issue to me is he denies a literal six day creation. Mm. He believes that he said that we don't uh, rule out evolution in our church. And I, I mean, that's a, not in the fundamentals, I don't believe, but it probably should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you hear not, you know, if you don't believe Moses and the prophets, you're not going to believe Jesus. That's what Jesus said. Um, well, and, and I think here's here's another interesting aspect of it that that nobody's really acknowledging or talking about is that Mark Lowry, the Bible he even uses, which I guess he doesn't really believe is like it doesn't make any sense because the only truth Mark Lowry knows about Jesus is from the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe at this point it's not. Maybe you know. You were, you got you got that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna he, he reads out of the Message Bible, and 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 we got a clip here. We'll, we'll let's let's play the clip and we'll get back to it. Mark, when you were quoting from the Message, it it was memorized. When you were quoting from the Message a minute ago, I guarantee you, there were some of our listeners who some of them, many of them, are still in fundamentalism. Yeah. Many of them have left fundamentalism, but they're either just out or they're trying to figure out how to get out. I guarantee you some of our listeners have mocked the message, mm -hmm. preached against the message, and many of them have probably never read it or heard it quoted. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you there were people that got chill bumps like I just did when you were quoting that because that was beautiful. And the beautiful thing about a paraphrase is they're not claiming that it's a version it's almost like a sermon or a, a poem written about Scripture. They're not yeah. claiming that's the authority. They're saying, this is my interpretation of Scripture. And that was when you were quoting both of those passages, man, that was so beautiful. <laughs> I get chills in Psalm 1 when it talks about going down to the school the of smart mouth. The school of smart mouth, the Message yeah. Bible. Um, the remix. Yeah, well, I happen, to, I happen to have a Message Bible right here. I've got one. Ba-boom, all right? And uh, what Nathan Cravat just said it's just it, it it's bull poopy, okay? That's not true. Well, it's somebody's interpretation. I agree it's somebody's interpretation, but the Message Bible is not out there. At least at least in the introduction to it, it says something completely different than what Nathan is claiming that it is, because he's trying to damage control right there. Because mm -hmm. there's another clip. I don't know if you have it or not. Um, people could go back and listen to it. Mark Lauer was like, I quote out of the Message Bible. Mm -hmm. how, how, you guys like the Message Bible, and it's just like no <laughs> crickets, <laughs> crickets. They don't say a word. He goes, "Well, I like it." <laughs> okay, uh, this is what the, the Message Bible has to say about itself right in the introduction. Okay, uh, a lot of people think that the Bible originally came out of sounding like something from the Middle Ages, but in reality, it was originally written in the language of the streets. It. <laughs> Anyway, well, I can say this stuff right there. It was the language of fishermen, shopkeepers, and other regular people. Eugene, talking about Eugene Peterson, wanted to get the Bible back to what kind to that kind of everyday common language that all of us use when we're not trying to be religious. Okay? It then goes on to say later, this is a quote from Eugene Peterson. Um, he talks about how he was in the translation work and he would like take the Bible and make it, you know, put it in the language of today for his people when he pastored. And then he says, I did that for 30 years in one congregation. And then one day, it was April 30th, 1990, 
I got a letter from an editor asking me to work on a new version of the Bible along the lines of what I had been doing as a pastor. I agreed. The next 10 years was harvest time. The message is the result. That is completely contradictory to what Nathan Cravat is trying to say and trying to clean up about the message. The message is a crap Bible. I'm sorry, there's really no other way to say it. It is a horrendous Bible, and you couldn't get saved reading the Message Bible. We, I read before I was, I read <laughs> at least not Romans ten. <laughs> at, least, at least not out of Romans ten. I'll tell you yeah. that much. Yeah. And so, and we, I could, oh, I mean, you could just take a heyday with the Message Bible, and these guys know it. Sure, the recovering fundamentalists know that about the Message. Well, where I have my bachelor's degree from, it's um, not a King James only mm -hmm. college, but. When I was going through the process of enrollment, they told me up front, they said, you need to have a conservative translation of the Bible. And I was like, well, King James. Uh, but that's what they told me. The up. ultimate in conservative. <laughs> so to, to try and pretend like there's no difference between yeah. the message or even a, an ESV yeah. is ridiculous. It is. And I didn't get cold chills. The fact that Nathan Cravat is getting cold... Was that him talking? Yeah. Okay. The fact that he's getting cold chills from that, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, really concerns me. Uh, that didn't give... When he was quoting the message Bible, I know we didn't play the clip of him quoting it. It didn't give me chills. It actually probably cleaned out a few of my arteries. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's circle back around yeah. uh, to the whole issue, and that is the idea that there's no written word of God. Now, they're saying that a lot of the IFB guys are jumping on this thing. They're taking them out of context. They're twisting his words. But it's yeah. not only IFB guys that are seeing this as what Mark Lowry said it was. Uh, there was a guy that I don't know that commented on a friend of mine's post. Uh, someone sent me the picture from Twitter. It says, what is false? What has no authority? Brother Tom Hatley responded, that the Bible is not the Word of God, only Christ is. People who reject the written Word of God. This dude follows up. Any scripture to back it up? John 1.1 1, 1 does say Jesus is the Word. Yeah. They're trying to defend him. Well, that's not really what he meant. Well, I'll say this. There were plenty of people who knew what he meant. Well, th this fellow right here is basically saying that that's okay. Yeah. Because Jesus is the Word in John 1.1, 1, 1, so... You got any scripture to back it up that, yeah. that there is written scripture? <laughs> and I know that there are people that believe this very thing because I made a post from December the 28th, 2020, um, where I said the Holy Spirit will never operate outside the pages of the Holy Scriptures. The only truth about God you can know is through the Bible. People went nuts. Okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even reading the comments I got on Facebook. I'm just reading the ones I got on Twitter, since this is kind of where the, the RFP crowd kind of, you know, uh, does a lot of their stuff on Twitter. This is what some of the responses were, okay? Some of the responses were, where is that found in Scripture? <laughs> What's it matter? <laughs> yeah. Uh, another response. But the Bible totally contradicts you, so I'm going with the Bible. The Spirit of God leads us into all truth. The Bible never points us to the Bible. It always points us to Christ. Somebody else says, Rev, if you truly... Now faith cometh by hearing and hearing hear by the Word of God. Yeah. The Bible never points itself to the Bible. <laughs> Come on. If you truly believe this, what do you believe happened between the time that Pentecost happened and someone recorded it? Even the Scriptures tell us that there are many things that happened that were not recorded. And then somebody else says... Is this statement, quote, the Holy Spirit will never operate operate outside the pages of the Holy Scriptures in the Bible? If it is not, and the only truth that God can know the only truth about God you can know is through the Bible, then that statement is must not be true. And I you could go and look on Facebook the response I got on there. People, there is a growing movement of people that are making statements that the Bible is not necessary in order to know God and know Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. that the, Mark Lowry, I believe he knew what he was saying, and there were plenty of other people that knew what he was saying because they believed the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, that that is the issue. We can only judge the man by what he said, right. not by what he was thinking, not his intent. 
Now, I will say this because I have listened to the Recovering Fundamentalist for, I mean, quite a while now, Mm -hmm. probably five months or so, I guess. And I have heard them give clear statements on believing in the inspiration of the scriptures. Uh, Definitely not like you and I would believe, but they have gave those ideas. And they're one on the apostasy. They said they believe every word of the Bible. Now, I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. I mean, that's an argument for another day. They couldn't tell you which one, yeah. but they, there's one out there they do believe every word of. <laughs> I mean, maybe they believe every word of all of them <laughs> as, as a whole, um, yeah. minus the ones they don't believe, like the New World Translation, <laughs> and they get to choose which they do and don't. Yeah. So that's an argument for another day. Or when the ESV <laughs> uses it. Brian Edwards doesn't believe that one either. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> And you will never speak will that in his never life. speak that in his life. <laughs> All he had to do is scroll down. Anyway, <laughs> the issues here, though, are this. Because I don't think they agree with that statement. Right. The problem is, number one, they were silent. Mm. At first, they were just quiet. That, that's actually what they did. They, mm. Mm. <laughs> they, they were silent about None it. None of them are the word of God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have heard them before. Specifically in the, I think her name's Lois McNair. They had a podcast that she was on and they were talking about a preacher making some crude statements and they were saying how people should have stood up. They should have spoke out against him. Well, just just, just lay it out there. Let them know what, what we're talking about. Yeah, It was Bob Gray. He made statements about mocking a woman's anatomy. Right. Um, and, and I I disagree with that wholeheartedly. It, it wasn't the attitude of a preacher or a gentleman. And he was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. Um, somebody should have stopped him. Uh, probably the pastor. I mean, if you were there, who knows? <laughs> uh, but somebody should have stopped him from saying that. But here's the issue. When it comes to their court, Yeah. nobody stopped this from being said. And they knew what was being said because of their silence. Yeah. Their silence was deafening. The next thing is not only were they silent, but they did not challenge. And that's what they're all about. You know, fear never truth never truth fears, never fears is a, a challenge. challenge. You you got goofballs <laughs> out there like IFB preacher clips, yeah. all these anon accounts. Now I'm not on Twitter, but I have enough friends that send me things that I don't have to be on Twitter anymore. Yeah. Um and to my knowledge, nobody has called out none of these anons no i've been preacher clips none of them have called out what mark lowry said and and what and, and the things that they put on i have preacher clips a, a lot of the a lot of the stuff on there i disagree with like things that other i have preachers say okay stuff that i wouldn't say things that i wouldn't do um but very there are there are some on there that i would consider heresy but it is few and far between. Yeah. Well, okay. they consider them all heresy. If we disagree, you're a heretic. Right. Exactly. Exactly. They they they, they take no different stance than the modern day Democrats. That, that they act the exact same way. Yeah. But I would consider very few of them. Okay. Bob Gray talking about a woman's anatomy in a way that I wouldn't. Okay. That's wrong, but it's not heresy. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's wrong. It's bad. It's stupid. But it's yeah. not heresy. Yeah. Um, and, and he, what he was saying, I wouldn't even necessarily disagree with. It was the way he was saying it and the looseness and how he was saying it. It was just, it was, it was inexcusable. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just don't talk about a lady's body parts like that in a pulpit or anywhere else for that matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so he could have said it better, right? This is what all they're, this is what all they're saying about Mark Lowry. He just could have said it better. That's the issue. It's not the fact that he couldn't say it. Well, he could have just said it better. He was saying it sloppily. No, he was saying what he believed. Mm-hmm. And that's the issue. You want to talk about, you know, why didn't, and, and that's the thing. Well, somebody should have stood up and, and rebuked Bob Gray. Okay, I'll give you that. Why didn't somebody rebuke Mark Lowry? Mm-hmm. Like we said, I mean, at the very least, they could have edited out or gave a disclaimer. Yeah. It wasn't edited. There was no disclaimer. There was no rebuke. 
I mean, the silence was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, and as soon as they could get back on with something they that they agreed with, which was right after, which I don't even know how they agreed with what he was saying there. But as soon as they felt like they could jump back on that train, that, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mark yeah. Lowry, Mark Lowry, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if the Bible doesn't lay you in the lap of Jesus, it's not doing he, he literally says, none of them are the word of God, okay? And then he says, you know, uh, n none of them are the word of God. And, you know, the, the purpose of the Bible, you know, if the Bible's not laying you in the lap of Jesus, it's not doing his job. That's literally the sequence of what was said. None of them are the word of God. And then, then he goes on to say, if the Bible's not laying you in the lap of Jesus, it's not doing his job. Oh, that's good. That's good. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I am. <laughs> if somebody gets on my podcast, and says that no Bible is the Word of God. We're not. To, we're not. I'm not trying to hook back up. I'm not trying to go along for the sake of conversation. We're stop. We're putting yeah. the brakes on right there. Yeah. And we're talking. That's an issue. That's an issue. Or at the very least, hitting delete. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that train is going no farther. Yeah. Um. But basically, though, that they're they're just doubling down. Yeah. That's the big issue, though. Yeah, like I, I disagree with with everything I've said up to this point as far as what they're doing, but the real big problem now mm -hmm. is that they refuse to admit there's even a problem. Right. They are doubling down on this thing and they're saying, "No, you're you're the one that's wrong." Yeah. Boy, and and you talk about people who have issues with the IFB for the yeah. way they act. Yeah. The, and the only statement they're making the only statement they're making, well, he's not a theologian. He just said something a little sloppy. To, to Tom Hatley, who posted just the clip and said it was false, mm -hmm. which true, it, it, it is false what he was saying. Their initial response was a guy drinking a beer going, I mean, <laughs> are they theologians? <laughs> yeah. Do they not have something to say about this? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the problem. They are doubling down. And here's... Uh, a set of responses from an individual. His name's Kyle Bailey. I don't know him, but I agree overall with what he's trying to put out there. He says, actually, these guys are right about there being doctrinal issues with that interview. This is coming from a recovered fundamentalist. Their critiques just don't go far enough. Lowry's comments about Jesus being the word of God and not the written word were not great. I feel like that's an understatement, but yes. The they word, were less than ideal. <laughs> yes. The word is Jesus. I agree. And whatever translation you want to use that reflects the Greek accurately, I would take a critical text view of that. While I disagree with that, because I am King James only, I do agree with the fact that you have to have a Bible. Whatever you think it yeah. is, you have to have that or you are not aligning to any fundamentals. E even even if when pressed, you can't produce. Because J.C. Groves one time, we've got, I showed you that Twitter conversation. I've got the screenshots. When pressed about where the Bible is today, J.C. Groves could not give an answer. No, and maybe he thinks it's Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> and, and maybe they were silent, so I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. I mean, maybe Groves doesn't know where, maybe Groves doesn't think he has a Bible. I've got the screenshots. If anybody wants to challenge that. Uh, but that's the thing. Even the critical text guys, even the guys who, if you press them, couldn't even really show you where the Bible is, they at least give credence to the fact that there's something out there somewhere. Yeah. If you're Reformed, you and I are going to have major differences on a lot of issues, but you should still have some loyalty to the idea of sola scriptura. Yeah. You should at least be coming at this like, that's not okay. Well, Kyle continues, he says, his comments about original sin were bordering on actual heresy. We are all born sinful. Jesus is loving, yes, but he also condemned in Matthew 23, which Mark Lowry said if uh, Russ Taft's therapist told him, if you have a Jesus that condemns you, you need to fire him. <laughs> so that's real bad. Uh, <laughs> we don't even have time to I, talk yeah. about that. We're not even attempting that one right now. All in all, there should be pushback on you guys for the lack of theological depth of the interview. I believe that the RF Podcast 3 can do better than that. I appreciate your ministry and the way you have impacted people. 
with the gospel. So this is a guy that's on their side. He's on their side. And, and I would encourage you, if you're watching this video, you may hate our guts. Yeah. But you should at least challenge us. Yeah. I mean, you should at least take umbrage with the fact that somebody said on this podcast and got away with it that there is no written scripture. And the, the cookie cutter response that I saw multiple times, people sending me different screenshots, and this was connected to at least one other, maybe two others, was his word, Nathan Cravat saying, his wording is unfortunate. Mark is a comedian, not a theologian. His words and context are being twisted. We regularly disagree with the positions of our guest. But you normally say when you disagree with them. Yeah. Like Phil Kent. I mean, when they had him on, J.C. Groves at least brought up the story. And Phil Kent said, I'll give you $10,000 if you can produce that tape. I I, I don't think J.C. Groves is $10,000 richer yet. But, (laughs) I mean, they have at least disagreed in the past verbally on the broadcast. Yeah. And, and, And here's the thing. The, the fact is that they all the time want to talk about, well, you know, truth never fears a challenge and, you know, we're standing up. All they're doing is showing their true colors with this thing because they're going to get Ray drawn. They're going to get Phil Kidd on. They're going to have all these theological disagreements. And then Mark Lowry comes on and literally just spews heresy and they just sit there and then just try to make excuses for it afterwards. Okay. And they all the time want to talk about, why don't you guys ever call out your own? We do call out our own. Do you know how many meetings I have lost because I have told guys, I'm not preaching for you. I'm not preaching with you. I am not going to come to that place. I'm, I've lost, you know, I've lost meetings. Mm -hmm. I've called out, I've called out guys that were my friends saying, this is wrong. This doesn't need to be happening. You don't need to have him in. I've lost meetings over that. Okay. So don't act like some kind of Satan moves. Well, you guys never call anybody out. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we do. We were calling out guys when their podcast was still pooping green. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the Backwoods Bible broadcast called out a lot of people. People yeah. who I think are good people and I like. Yeah. But they're just, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, they're wrong. And we've never feared to do that. When some people- called each other out. Have we? Well, it's usually in private, but yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We I yeah mean, in private, yeah. You know, if we think if we think one or the other is saying something we disagree with, neither one of us are shy about letting each other know. No, but all this shows, and and this is where kind of I'm hanging my hat with this. This all just shows that it's not. It's a slippery slope with this thing. And it just goes to show, as long as you're hating on the IFB, and we don't even consider ourselves IFB. That's the thing. But as long as you're hating on those guys, you get a pass. Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, it's fine. As long as you're just trying to throw shade on the IFB. And that's my biggest issue with this thing because it's gotten to the point now where it's literal heresy. It's literally heresy is flowing on this podcast unchallenged. And, and that's that's just a huge issue with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I consider myself IFB in, in the true definitions of the word. Um, I am independent. I do believe in the fundamentals, and I am Baptist. Uh, but ha- having said all this, I have no problem pointing out anybody who's going astray doctrinally. Yeah. And so this needs to be challenged. I know they don't listen to us well they listen to us they just don't oh, they'll care listen what we to this. they'll listen to this oh, one. <laughs> I, I promise you that but you know brian edwards won't even scroll down to see what you say because you're not going to speak into his life right so what i'm saying is some of you guys who will speak into their lives you should say something yeah you know this this should not go unchecked well fear or excuse me truth never fears a challenge but in this case it's quite obvious that fear never challenges the truth. (laughs) (laughs) And I just thought of that, and I'm awfully proud of it. (laughs) So I guess we'll post this, and we'll get either a comment of a guy holding a beer with thumbs up or just a poster for the next podcast. Right. We'll see. Yeah, that, that's what they've been doing all right on Twitter. Oh, uh, you know, anybody that talks about their podcast in a negative way, they just post, here's our upcoming schedule, you know. <laughs> Join us for more heresy. Jeez. Yeah. I, and I'm just kidding about that. 
there's a lot of things I disagree with them on, but this this one's a big one. It is. It yeah. is. Because we're not talking about preferences. Mm-mm. We're not talking about women in skirts. We're not talking about, you know... Culottes. Culottes. We're not talking about, you know, whatever, music. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about any of that stuff. I will openly admit that a lot of that stuff can be boiled down to preferences and, and things of that nature, okay? Uh, things that aren't clearly outlined in the Word of God. 100% agreement with that. We've never been shy about admitting that. There are some things I do that are out of pure preference because I, I think they're better to do it that way. But we're not talking about any of that stuff. We're talking about straight up saying there is no written word. And that's a real big problem. Yes. I'm going to make a prediction, and this could be wrong. <laughs> could be wrong. I mean, I'm, you're so good at these. I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I, I, a little bit. Uh, I I don't suspect that this is the last heretical thing that's going to come out of these guys. I see a definite I see a definite downward spiral here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be years. I just I I see a definite downward spiral. What else you I mean, what else you just going to agree with? So, anyway. Well, you got anything else you want to say? Nope. Sushi's calling my name. I know, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Ready to get some of that good Holy Ghost sanctified sushi. This has been long enough. Yeah, it's been long <laughs> enough. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and share it. Send it to somebody. And uh, until next time, be on the lookout because we are in Laodicea. And this has been the Laodicean Lookout.